About a year ago, Mayor David Narkowitz agreed to sign an executive order called the Trust Act. The first component of the Northampton Trust Act that the mayor agreed to sign is to direct the Northampton Police Department officers not to honor or enforce any detainer request from the U.S. Immigration and Customs and Informant Agency, particularly those who are not criminals or do not, do not have any previous crime history. The mayor also directed that the Northampton Police Department would allow motor vehicle operators who were stopped for a violation and found to be without a license that they would be given a reasonable opportunity to arrange for a properly licensed person to come and pick them up, regardless of their immigration status. The third component of this policy is to make sure that this policy was invaded in the training of every officer and that all of the procedures were updated to ensure that all members of our immigrant community felt that Northampton Police Department developed a trusting relationship with them, including translation services, making sure that the immigrant community can access the police department with confidence and without any fear. In issuing this order, I had the full support of the police chief of the city of Northampton, uh, Russ Sinkowitz, um, as well as uh, you know his command staff, um, and I, I believe the the, um, the the support of our Northampton City Council, um, which had years earlier um, adopted a resolution working collaboratively with the chief. Um, regarding this issue of, um, of how uh, we treat um, uh, members of our, of, of our immigrant communities in the city. Part of the process for me was also education, was the opportunity to meet with um, members of our community um, who were um, immigrants and in some cases undocumented immigrants um, to hear their stories and to hear some of the concerns and fears that they had um, regarding um, you know, potential uh, separation from loved ones um, regarding uh, very minor um, uh, traffic infractions turning into much larger issues. And I think one of the more negative aspects of, the, of our current federal uh, policies re with regard to immigration is the idea that a member of our community who's been a victim of crime um, would somehow feel afraid that they couldn't report that crime, that they couldn't come forward, whether that's someone who's a victim of uh, theft or someone who's a victim of illegal labor practices, uh, domestic violence, et cetera. Um, so I think um, th that was a big part of it, including not only one-on-one -on -one meetings, but also um, a uh, community forum that was that both myself and Chief Sinkowitz attended, in which we heard firsthand testimony um, from folks who um, who told these kinds of uh, stories. So um, I think one of the, you know, again, I think one of the issues, um, and this is you know, sort of the uh, post 9/11 era, um, there were many attempts to change our laws. Um, everything from um, you know. Uh, surveillance, civil liberties, um, and, and in this case, immigration laws. And I believe that um, they really have, have uh, borne out that they have not been effective um, in terms of, instead of targeting um, people who are criminals or people who are a danger or a threat to the United States, in many cases they have um, targeted you know, hardworking uh, people who are here. In some cases they have fled um, oppression and, and um, situations in other countries. And they're here like so many other millions of Americans who've come here uh, to try to get on a path to, toward citizenship. So to the extent that uh, we can um, provide a supportive and welcoming community, um, that's, I think, one of my um, objectives as the mayor in enacting this policy. I think, and I, and I did, I have gotten, um, believe me, there, was, there has not been um, sort of unanimous support for this in Northampton. Um, I had a lot of uh, people, including supporters of mine, who didn't understand why I was doing this. And I think um, the way the debate has been framed is that, um, that you know, someone who is here um, illegally, uh, you know, is, is a, 
violating the law, and so they must be detained, they must be deported, etc. Very black and white for some people. Um, but what I have to point out to them is a, um, you know, we have a lot of responsibilities and duties at the local level. Enforcing federal immigration laws is not one of them. Um, that's really not our responsibility. We don't have the funding to do that. We don't have the staff. We don't have, it's really not part of our responsibility. Our responsibility is to make sure that our community is safe, that our community, and, and so um, I guess the best way that I've explained it to people is, you know, if you're, if you had a, if one of your loved ones was pulled over because they had a tail light out um, and could be detained <laughs> and, um, and basically taken away by federal officials or turned over to federal officials, um, is that the kind of society or community you'd want to live in? And I think most people would not agree with that, um, that, that we, um, you know, one of the things that we, the reason why we um, care so much about this country and that we react so strongly to things like 9-11 is because we, 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 um, we're a country based on freedom and liberty. And so um, I, I think to the extent that people want to give up those liberties and those freedoms, um, it's sort of counter counterproductive to, the, to, to maintaining our, our country the way it is now. So. Um, so I think as I've had a chance to talk that through with people, I think there, I think it's also powerful um, to hear when they hear police officers who are supportive of the policy, like to hear our police chief um, say that he's supportive of the policy. I think that gives people, um, I think that changes minds, and I know police uh, chiefs and, and sheriffs around the country um, have been, uh, with a few crazy exceptions, um, have, uh, have been very supportive of this as a policy measure. Um, and again, it's, it's uh, police, uh, police, local cities and towns are so, um, you know, have so many other responsibilities that we have to deal with um, and so many other more dangerous pressing issues, you know, like the opioid crisis, like, uh, uh, you know, sex trafficking, you know, there's just so many other higher order things that we need to focus on. And, um, and it seems like this issue has been politicized and it's an easy kind of, um, you know, political punchline for some people uh, to go stand at the border and talk about fences and all those kinds of things. Um, in a country that has been founded by immigrants um, and, um, and that's been really the bedrock of our, of our country. Um, you know, my, I'm, I'm the grandson of immigrants. Um, you know, so uh, my wife is an immigrant to this country, um, and our community is you know filled with um, with immigrants who've come here, built businesses, uh, raised families, and so you know that's that's really what I say to people who don't understand this issue. And I think when they take time to study it and really understand it, um, particularly the fact that these detainer requests are not are not. You know, they have no, they're not issued by a judge, they're not issued by a court, they're not sanctioned by a court in any way. Um, and again, if I, if I ask, you know, a resident, what if your son or daughter, um, what if some agency somewhere in Washington that was not a court, which did not have due process, et cetera, could just issue an order to have your, your son or daughter um, detained? Um, I don't think most people would support that. So um, I think we have to apply the same rules um, uh, of fairness and um, and civil liberties um, across the board. So I have checked with our um, with our chief uh, prior to the interview, and we have not received any detainer requests um, to date uh, since the policy was enacted. Um, I don't know if that's related to the policy or not related to the policy, but that's the um, that's the information uh, that I've received. Um, so there have uh, have not been any. I mean, typically. Um, my understanding of this is that typically um, they're more frequently in cases where someone may be already, you know, in custody or in a jail. Um, so I think sometimes, you know, sheriffs um, or or uh, whatever the structure is of who who runs um, uh, jails um, are often probably are more likely to get that type of a request. Um, but no, we have not received any uh, detainer requests, and, and again, our, pol our standing policy is we would not honor such a request if we received one. Nor are we required to honor that, frankly. Uh, there's, no, uh, there's no law that requires us to honor it. 
um, and I think courts um, have upheld our right not to honor such a request. Obviously, I th it was fairly big news here when the policy was enacted, so that was obviously, I think it was well publicized. Um, but we also, um, you know, we are, Northampton Police Department is, is one of a handful of accredited police departments across uh, the state, um, and we've been accredited, they've been accredited since 2002. And what that means is we have very well-developed um, policies and procedures for everything they do. Um, so in addition to my issuing the policy, um, our, um, uh, the internal policies of the department were amended um, so that uh, to reflect, particularly the arrest policies were amended um, uh, to very specifically include this in our arrest policy. So any officers on the street, whether they're um, you know, veteran or folks that are being newly trained, um, they understand that this is the policy and, and obviously all of our officers were briefed on the policy change when it came about and any new officers that go through our training uh, program are, are briefed on what our policies are with regard to arrests. We also, um, our police department also uh, set up um, a special page on their website. Um, so if you go to Northampton uh, Police, uh, you know, whatever, I think it's NorthamptonPoliceDepartment.com um, backslash immigrants, there's a special page set up where we have um, not only information about this policy, um, but we also have um, uh, in, in multiple languages information about um, how members of the immigrant community can, can contact the police. Um, we also have um, information about our um, U visa program, um, which is a special uh, visa program, and we have officers who have been trained um, in that. Um, which is a, a way that we can help work with people who've been victims, um, undocumented immigrants who've been victims of crimes, um, to be able to uh, be here safely and without fear, um, and help them, uh, you know, help help prosecute uh, whatever crimes that they've been the victims of. So, um, so we've tried to do that, um, and we've tried to make sure that. Um, the broader community knows about it, but also that uh, folks in the immigrant community know that they can contact us and contact the police uh, without fear. Yeah, all of our, you know, again, all of our officers, you know, part of the, um, you know, the, part of a serving as an officer within the department is um, following the, the policies as they're laid forth. And so if, if, um, any of our, those policies, including the specific ones about this, um, are not followed. Uh, there is a whole process by which an officer would be held accountable. Um, uh, and, and again, officers are part of a larger team. Um, office, you know, police officers that are on the street are supervised, um, you know, both by a sergeant as well as uh, lieutenants, and then ultimately, you know, by a captain of operations, and then ultimately the chief. Um, so there's a chain of command that oversees all of our officers, and and you know, arrests are um, you know are one of the things that uh, we are have we our police officers have to be very scrupulous about in terms of um, following procedure, documenting, etc. Um, so if if there was an occasion. Um, that this or any other policy uh, were violated, um, there's a processes in place that they would um, that they would uh, be held account to. Um, I I have a, a I have a little bit of an understanding and awareness of the program. I can tell you that in speaking to our chief um, and some of our other senior officers, you know they have not uh, they have not been you know reached out to or approached by um, this new PEPCOM, um, uh, uh, nor has anyone from ICE uh, reached out to NPD uh, regarding this new program. Um, so while it may be something that's been announced, you know, on a more national level, um, it has not, uh, at this point, um, and they have not had any contact or, or, or developed any kind of um, communication with our local police department. Um, obviously, if they do, that we'll be very interested to hear uh, what 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 is involved. I, I my assumption is that they're probably reaching out on a more state level at this point, um, 
with governors, more likely governors, attorney generals, etc. Uh, but to date, I'm not, we, we have not had any contact with the program. One year later, I remain just as strongly committed um, to this issue and to making sure that Northampton uh, remains a, a safe and welcoming place for immigrant communities. Obviously, um, you know, our police department is committed to ensuring that our streets and, and neighborhoods are safe and that, um, that uh, crimes are prosecuted and people who perpetrate crimes on someone are, 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 are prosecuted. Um, but in terms of, um, in terms of these federal uh, detainer requests where there, in fact, you know, there is no um, crime or, or uh, judicial uh, involvement, uh, we will continue to, um, to not, to not um, honor them. And, um, and we will obviously be watchful and mindful of, um, of whatever new programs um, are, are being imposed on states and, and by, by, um, by association, local cities and towns, so we can understand what, what the impacts may be here at the local level. Um, but again, I, I want to assure um, people who are in the immigrant communities, particularly those who um, may be victims of crime, may have been victims of crime, um, I would encourage you to please, um, this is your community, it's your police department, to please come forward and let our police officers know if you've been a victim of a crime so that they can help you. And that's really our role is to help, um, to help all the members of our community. Um, so again, thank you for this opportunity to talk about our trust um, executive policy here in Northampton. And I'll obviously encourage um, other cities and towns across the Commonwealth to um, look into this very important issue. Well, I know, um, I know last, uh, during the time that I was issuing my policy, there were bills pending in the legislature that um, ultimately were not successful um, prior to Governor Patrick leaving office. Now, obviously, a new, uh, new governor, new legislature, and so, um, and I know that there are similar initiatives now pending. Um, for the state to take a position, like other states um, across the country have have taken a position, and I'm I hope that that is um, successful. I know myself and several other uh, mayors, including you know Mayor Morse in um, Holyoke and Mayor Curtitoni in Somerville, have stepped forward um, to put our cities on record, um, and I'm hoping enough other. Um, mayors and boards of selectmen around the state will similarly st uh, step forward um, so that state leaders will understand that this is really a policy that should be the policy of the Commonwealth, not just the policy of individual cities and towns. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity.